What's going on everybody? It's PH Darren, the guy with no PhD, but depends on who you ask. I got a PhD. Today I want to talk to you about something that's completely different than uh, firearms, red pill, beat bop, whatever the heck it is I normally talk about on this channel. But it's about learning. And before you click off, do me a favor, don't do that. Nope. Um, so it's going to be the six laws of learning. Now when it comes to firearms, art, red pill, whatever, dating, you learn somewhere. You learn all those things. And real fast, I want to go over the six principles or the laws, we say, of learning and, and, and why. But you can use these to all of what I do on this channel, whether it's teaching you how to draw something, teaching you how to shoot something, teaching you um, something about the dating market, whatever it may be, teaching you something about myself. Hell, I don't know. But whatever it is, you have to be, first of all, engaged, ready to learn. So the very first law of learning is the law of readiness. Plain and simple, you have to be ready to learn. Not only do you, the stimuli, you know, has to uh, engage for the student, the pupil, but the instructor as, uh, as well. So if I am an instructor, a teacher, whatever it may be, and I'm trying to teach you something and I'm not even prepared, right? I don't have my lessons prepared. You could say this video, for instance. Um, if I'm not prepared, you know I'm not prepared, and therefore you shut down. You will shut down and say, I do not know why I'm taking any sort of guidance leadership training from this individual who isn't even ready. And then two, like I said, the student, the pupil, you have to be eager to learn, ready to learn, and most of all, willing to learn. Some people have to go sit in classes that they are more qualified to teach than the instructor themselves, and we know that to be true. Some people have to take a class to check a box. Some people take a class because they're very interested in it, and then they find out that the instructor has no clue what they're talking about. Nope. And then they, they instantly just say, well, that was a waste of time. So the applying the next five principles will either uh, make or break the end result. So the second one, after the law of uh, readiness, is the law of effect. So how effective is it? So learning overall, learning anything, and I do have some notes in front of me just so you know. Prepared. Um, the law of effect is going to be learning by strengthened by positive emotions and weakened by negative. So when somebody, let's say art for instance, or shooting, they're both similar. Nope. They're both an art by themselves. So drawing a head or drawing a nose and your nose sucks, hearing somebody who is better than you say, yes, your nose does suck, makes you clam up and shut down and you have no will, willingness to get better. Same thing with people who shoot. Um, they get uh, they don't hit the target. They get pissed off. They start to get upset and they ask themselves, why can't I do what you did? They don't realize you've been training for years or months or days, whatever it may be. Some people have natural skills and they just can't get it. And you say, yeah, you do suck. You're a bad shooter or you know what? Your, your trigger squeeze is just awful or you can't look right. You don't know how to adjust your sights. They will not want to do that exercise again. They will not want to do it because the effect they had was negative. Right? Not only from themselves, they beat themselves up and then you kicked them while they were down. Right? If they went and yeeted themselves down the stairs, you don't go down there and point and say, aha, all right, you're right, you do suck, you belong at the bottom of the stairs. They will not get themselves up and want to repeat this again unless they absolutely have to. And then still, it will be a chore to get that person to understand. So the third law is the law of exercise. So repeatability, you have to exercise whatever it is you do. The more practice, so you've heard practice makes perfect, there's a lot of truth to that. People who go out there and shoot um, online, they are not legit functional like how we would think firearms instructors, right? But a lot of people on YouTube who are in the gun community, they shoot a lot of bullets, right? They shoot soda cans, gongs like Hickok 45, uh, all kinds of crap like Demolition Ranch. They will shoot whatever, right? And they do it so much, the exercise, right, of them physically manipulating that trigger, even if it's like something like me right now, I'm recording this and then my, my memory card dies or the battery dies and I have to do it again. Uh, maybe the next video is going to be better than the one I'm shooting now because I have repeated this process over and over and over again. Um, this is also something that a lot of people will consider the uh, use or lose, 
So if you don't use something over time, you will lose it. If you don't speak a certain language or practice that language over time, you will start to forget what those simple words mean. It could be words in your own tongue. We're all English speakers here for the most part. If you don't say something for a long period of time, you will remember it when you hear it, but you can't recall it from your brain because you don't use it enough. You don't exercise that skill set. And the, uh, what is it, hippocampus, that part of our brain, uh, that part of our brain somewhere in the central area is where our learning and our memories are stored. It's very easy because you can remember things you learned. And if you do not do that, um, whether it be um, art, for instance, right? It's one of those perishable skills, right? There are certain things that you can uh, that are perishable. When people talk about firearms training specifically, like these behind me, they say, oh, I always have to be shooting. I always have to be shooting. And the truth is you do not. Nope. This right here, I believe these are some real rounds. These are some real rounds. What are these? These are dummy rounds, right? So I can use dummy rounds in place of real rounds, all right? So I have actual training. I can do this so much more and it be more effective than me actually shooting real bullets. I can do that because I'm still getting the manipulation down. I'm still getting the fact that I'm still manipulating the trigger, inserting magazines, getting on target, whatever it may be, I can do that over and over and over again. It is very clear as a firearms instructor that you can see somebody who's very comfortable on a firearm. And I mean very comfortable. And some of those people haven't shot in literally a year. And then you, you would say to yourself, I know why you're a good shot. You do a lot of dry land practice. You do a lot of uh, speed reloads in your house with dummy rounds. You do uh, prism trainers or simulators. You may not shoot real bullets and they actually do enjoy that and do it. And it pays off. Uh, trigger manipulation, safety manipulation, all of those things, right? And the very first time you do something, you will not get it right. And if you do, congratulations. Most likely you are not. Uh, going into the fourth one, the law of primacy. This is uh, the very first way you learn something. So primacy, like primary or um, whatever, is obviously the first. Oh, excuse me. How you learn something first in your brain will be the, the best or the correct way to learn it. So this is like the whole old dog, new tricks type of thing. Um, teaching your dog how to do something that they've already been doing a certain way. Yes, it can be harder. It is very hard to relearn something because the law of primacy says you will learn something the first time and that be right. This is where a lot of uh, like bad drivers, people who don't signal, they didn't learn to signal or or something to that effect. They did not go to school to actually properly learn how to drive, when to put on the blinker, when to brake, how fast to brake, when you should start braking. If you learn a skill wrong, that will be correct in your head, regardless of what the law says, regardless of what the backseat driver says. You will think what you are doing is correct because that's how you learned. And nobody likes to admit that they learned something incorrectly or dead wrong. Nope. So when it comes to the law of primacy, you want to teach somebody something the right way. There are times where someone says, hey, look, I want them to learn not to touch the stove by burning their hand on the stove. That's one way to do it. But then they go into what's the law of effect and the effectiveness. Um, and that's where I believe, yeah. Oh, the, yeah, the law of effect. That's the positive or negative learning. If they have a very negative experience, they will not want to do it. So people who take uh, individual shooting for the very first time, you should not take them shooting for the very first time with a 12-gauge shotgun or um, some big bore rifle or whatever it may be, you know, a, a 308 pistol with a dual port muzzle brake or no muzzle brake, and then just the recoil is just too much for them, just because you wanna get a few laughs. They will hate that experience, and therefore, they will not wanna do it. You can never get them to move past what their last experience are, right? We always fall back on our lowest level of training, and if you're trying to train somebody in said thing, let's say shooting, for instance, uh, and you know they, they had the gun blow back and hit them in the forehead or just drop it completely, they're going to say, yep, nope, I'm done. And like, no, 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 hold on, let's shoot the 22 long rifle now. Too bad, too late, I'm already done. I've already shut down, so I no longer want to learn because the experience was so negative, I don't want to even give it another chance. 
Now, not everybody's like that, but overall humanity, we are very much like that. Um, so that's the law of primacy. How you learn something correct the first time will be right in your eyes, right? Um, like I said, this, this can apply to art, even how you hold a pencil. I had to relearn, like my Apple Pencil, instead of using a tripod grip when I draw, I actually hold the pencil like this. And I have to use my shoulder, right, when I'm drawing circles, instead of my little wrist. And that took some time to do it. But guess what? Moving into the law of exercise, doing something over and over again, drawing straight lines like this, are so much easier than chick, 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 all the way across the paper, right? And that's that. Uh, going into law number five, the law of recency. So this is going to say a person remembers the most recently learned information the best. So just like now, you're watching this video. If you made it this far, congratulations. You are following the steps, right? You probably can say the law of readiness, the law of effect, the law of this, that. And then you're going to say, what was the last one he just said? Oh, the law of primacy. Then the law of... Go ahead. What's the one we just talked about? The law of of recency. The most recent thing you learn will be the last thing that you will remember best, whether you like it or not. And then the sixth one, the law of intensity, right? How intense is that training? This is going to be the more exciting and engaging, right? The information is likely, uh, I'm sorry, that person will more likely remember it. This is where things are very satisfying. So once again, when it comes to shooting, I'm using that as an example because my channel is probably primarily geared towards the Second Amendment, firearms, shooting, um, things of that nature. Um, when I use, let's say for instance, I have this guy right here. This is my uh, 300 Blackout pistol. I absolutely love it. It's got an ambidextrous bolt catch. My neighbor today for the first time saw this and he absolutely loved it. Was he using it correctly? Nope. But I said, hey, you know what? Let's just go ahead and let me show you the correct way to do it. Therefore, in your head, you will you will see it. And I'm using a completely different method, right? This is called the EDIP method. Explain, demonstrate, imitate, practice. Completely different topic. But I use the EDIP method because I don't want people to learn things incorrectly. So I said, this is how I hold it. I don't know how you hold your firearm. This is how I hold it. And this is how I manipulate this, this here thing. Um, so learning that helped me out tremendously as an instructor. I can apply these six principles of learning to anything. Like I stated, art, firearms, dating, right? Dating overall can be very in entertaining at the end of it. How engaging was it? So your very first date, right? You're going to remember everything about that date. Were you ready? Law of readiness. Were you late? Was she late? Were both of you of the same sex late? Um, were you tired? Are you going just to go? Or you genuinely want to go on this date? You can sense that from a person from the very start. The law of effect. What is the positive or negative emotions associated with that date? Um, the law of exercise. Um, that's repeatability. If you do something all the time on a date, you're going to do it on this date by default because you've done it so many times. Then you have like uh, the law of primacy, the law of recency, law of intensity. So all that stuff, whatever was said first on that date, um, however they looked, this is where people say um, you can't get a second chance to make a first impression. That's it. Law of primacy. Uh, the way you learn something first. I learned this about you. You dress like this, you dress well, or you don't at all. And then um, the most recent thing they said, good or bad, you will remember it. And then, like I said, going into the law of intensity, the very last law, um, you can say that was a really awesome date. I want to do it again, right? And that's where the other part of our brain dumps dopamine and that gives you the That gives you that because now it, it rewards you and says I like this Right, so if you go once again going back to firearms if you go shoot in the very first time you shoot you have a 12 gauge hit you in the forehead a sawed off shotgun or you shoot yourself in the foot or something retarded you will probably not be on the range next week but if you have an awesome instructor and somebody who actually wants you to enjoy shooting, you will most likely probably buy your own firearm because now you have to get the like, like, hey, it was so fun. I want to do it again. And if I don't go with this person, how do I learn it without doing it myself? So um, that's one of the things I want to talk about. Those six principles, you can apply them to anything. I'm trying to use them towards art, firearms, dating, things like that, that my channel is primarily. Um, geared towards so 
Either way, hope you like it. That's my video for the day. Take it out, do something with it, share this video to somebody else who needs to learn or, or you think has a problem learning, even if it's your children, um, things of that nature. I have four children. I have to understand, I have to make these things exciting for my children to teach them. If not, shut down, all right? So either way, that's my videos page, Darren, and I'm out. Peace.